my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we are around this altar on the fourth Sunday of the Easter, uh, today we are celebrating as a Good Shepherd Sunday. Uh, Good Shepherd Sunday, we particularly pray for uh, to have vocation in the Catholic Church. There will be more vocation to the priesthood, more vocation to the religious life. So especially in a man today, we are praying for our youth, our young states, the young generation. They will be inspired. And they will follow the footstep of Jesus by becoming a priest or a religious in the future. Many of these and sisters, when we call about vocation, you know, don't misunderstand uh, God will not really come to your life and will say, Hey, Anak, I want you to be a priest. Never God will say like that. Eh? Don't wait for that. So how will you know that you have a call to the priesthood? Uh, this is a kind of attitude that you are so much in love with the life of a priest. That means somehow you have a call to the priesthood. In my life, my dear brothers and sisters, I think I have shared this, this testimony before. Two incidents in my life that made me to strongly decide to become a priest. When I was very young, when I was very young, one of the things that so many beggars come to our place, uh, in my province, we all have a little paddy field, everybody have. Uh, everybody have rice field. That's our main agriculture. All are farmers in my province. So everybody have little place where they sow the rice, reap the rice. So we don't buy much from the shop because we make our own rice in our own field. Everybody's farmers. So many beggars come to that area. So when the beggars comes, usually very seldom people give money. Rather they will give, you know, one whole hand of rice to them. So they have a small bag always when they come to the house to receive it because 99 percentage of the people would be reaping rice for them. So sometime they go to the next province, they sell the rice, they get the money. So this is the way they live. So whenever beggars come to my house, of course, my parents can give it, but my parents always call me or my brothers, hey Anak, come, uh, there is somebody is asking for almsgiving. You see, I would say why I am sharing this. I want my loving parents here, wanted to follow like these things. This is the way that you inspire a child. It's not that you cannot give. Definitely you can give. My parents also could have given. But they no, never give. Instead, they will call the children, and now come, there is somebody is asking for almsgiving. Go to the kitchen, get the handful of rice, or if maybe there is vegetable, or if there is coins, get together with the rice and give it to that kuya. My parents never tell, give it to that beggar, no. Give it to that kuya or ate. And one thing I still remember, my mommy and papa would say, Anak, after giving the handful of rice, ask them, do they need anything to drink? You know, whenever I give, I am invited. Sometimes it's my brothers, sometimes it's me. But whenever I am invited, when I give this handful of rice or little coins to them, and when I ask them, do you want something to drink or eat, I could see a sincere smile on their face. And eventually, you know, I was thinking that in the future, I wanted to help poor people. So to help the poor people, 
I wanted to be like Mother Teresa. I wanted to be a priest. So, so and so on, my build up my dream. But when I was grade six, that is the strong inspiration that I had. When I was grade six, my parents, or especially my mother, had an accident. She fell down, she broke her right hand, and she had fracture on her chin. And the chin fracture was able to cure in one month, but the hand fracture, the right hand fracture, took almost three months to four months to get cured. Uh, one of other than of the you know of the paddy field, my family's income was you know we have cows, so we milk and we sell the milk also to the neighboring restaurants. So my parents are the one milking the cow. So anyway, after four months, mummy had to cut the you know the plaster, the cut. But usually, you know that after four months, you will not be able to do anything all on a sudden. You have to undergo physiotherapy. And my house is in province. To go to a hospital, we have to travel almost one and a half hours in a boat. Walanang road transportation, only boat is there. So one and a half hours in the boat, then another 15 minutes in the public bus. This far it is the hospital. So Papa brought her to the hospital and doing the physiotherapy, of course, they have to come back like 3 p.m. in the afternoon to milk the cow again in the afternoon and sell the milk. And we four children, that is the only income that we have. So mommy was crying. I saw one day, like uh, 6 a.m. in the kitchen, literally she was crying, almost like cursing. I cannot suffer it anything. I cannot take it anymore. Who is there to help me? Blah, 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 so many things. You know that mothers are little dramatic. Eh? They make so many things. Anyway, I saw literally that mommy was crying. As usual, they went to the hospital for the physiotherapy. Then I saw in the afternoon, only papa came back. So I asked papa, where is mommy? Then papa said, Mommy wants to attend a retreat in the, in the city. She heard there was a charismatic retreat, so she wants to attend. I asked her, you, if you want, you can attend. I have no problem. But Papa have to come back because there is nobody at home. So Mommy stayed in the city, attended the retreat. So these are the stories that I heard from Mommy later on. This is a story about 11, p, 11 a.m., eh? 11 a.m., the retreat started like 8 a.m., like 10.30, 11, mommy started to attend. Around 12 noon, one of the priests who was giving the retreat uh, was doing some healing session, praise and worship song, then the healing session. The priest who had a vision in that healing session, at 12 noon, <laughs> he said that there are 10 people you know, India is very populated, so around 5,000 to 7,000 people attend in a very big, like a Loneta ground, it's a public place, very big crowd. So said that among this crowd, around 10 to 12 people are miraculously healed from their right hand severe pain. Five people got immediate healing, another seven will be get healed in three days. So I want you to check that somebody who was not able to do anything that last three days, especially this morning, crying so much, was not able to lift even a glass of water, now can lift the chair that you were sitting, the table just beside you, if you're able to lift and there is no pain, they can simply stand up and give testimony to God, they are miraculously healed. Anyway, my mommy was checking on the chair, table, no pain, zero pain at all. She stood up together with other four people because five people stood up to give a testimony that God miraculously healed. Anyway, what I am seeing, it, these are the stories happening in the city. What I am seeing around 8 p.m., my mommy came back. When she came back, there was six Bible she is carrying. I was so surprised. Why are you carrying six Bibles? 
He said, everyone will have one each Bible in our house. Four children, then Papa and Mommy. So six of us, everybody have a personal Bible from that day on ways. And she was saying this story. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, literally, I could not believe it. Because I saw what she was saying this early morning, almost like cursing, crying, complaining left and right. And that evening from 8 p.m. on, boys, unbelievable. She was doing all the household work as if that there is 10 people with her so fast, you know, carrying a bucket of water as if nothing happened. Story in short, that night I could not sleep and I could not believe what's happening around me. And I was in grade six. That night I took a decision. <laughs> Lord, I will be definitely a priest in the future. This is the story behind my vocation. You see how God inspires us. And I want every parents here on the Good Shepherd Sunday, we also have so many beggars asking, you know, almsgiving. We have Cosina in San Antonio. We are serving 200 people, more than 200 people every day from Monday to Saturday. I know all parents are able to do something. When you see somebody's almsgiving, you give them two pesos, five pesos, whatever may be. But you know today always, parents do not give. Rather, give that money to your child and ask the child to give. Teach them a lesson, please. I know that you are able to give. Please stop giving. But give that money to Anak. Please give it to that Kuya. Huh? Maybe after further you can see how blessed we are, Anak. At least we have small house. We have little fan. Or we have an air con in this super, you know, heat. So hot, grab it. Everybody is having so much of trouble. But we are so blessed. Look at that Kuya. He's on the street. No electric fan. No proper food. Anak, how much we are blessed. Let us be thankful to the God. You know, my parents, this is the way that we share faith to our new generation. It's not only asking them to read the Bible. Life experiences, how bigger influence than of reading the Bible because they see and they experience. And literally, I took a decision when I was at the, I was grade six, never doubted. From grade six, that time, you know, I was so young. Today I am 43, 44 years old, 17 years in the priesthood. 10 years I went through the formation to become a priest. Then 17 years as an ordained priest, never, never, a single day or a single moment in my life as of today doubted my vocation to be a priest. God is so good. This is the way that we have to nourish it. So I hope and I feel, I know that this Sinkalong community have so many priests. So many priests, we need more. More people have to come to the vineyard of the Jesus Christ. That's why we celebrate this Sunday as a Good Shepherd Sunday. Look today's gospel passage. Beautiful image of a Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd is always laying his life for the sheep because the sheep belongs to him and he belongs to the sheep. He never leaves. He never leaves. He's just like a mother. Mother belongs to the child, and child belongs to the mother. Huh? Tama? It's a beautiful thing. That's why even when children do something, mother cannot forget anything. I recently read a beautiful story about a mother. That made me teary eye. I will share the story like this. A mother was a widower, and the widower 
you know and she has only one son only one son he grew old it was time for him to get married he got married a beautiful lady she got he got married to a beautiful lady after 5 years of marital life there was little conflict between the husband and the wife wife asked one day mahal or my baby my sweetheart tell me who is more important for you your mother or me and the husband got so much confused what shall i say she is my mother she brought me up this much then the husband said of course i love my mother and i love you also no 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 you cannot say it as two i wanted to have only one answer either mother or me he said as i come from my mother of course i love my mother but does not mean that i don't love you the wife was not and satisfied with the answer so many fights happened after few more months she repeated the question again tell me who is more important for you in your life your mother or me he became silent and that night she made a demand if ever that you love me so much more than your mother i want you to do something tonight you kill your mother tonight and take her heart bring it on a plate to my room then i will believe that you love me more than your mother he was so confused and he could not sleep and he could not leave the wife also that night he decided to kill the mother he went to the other room kill the mother cut the heart of the mother and put it on a plate and walking to their bedroom which he was nearby but when he was walking unfortunately he bumped on the step of the door and fall down the plate also was thrown away from him the heart was filled, spilled he was so much perplexed with the shivering hand so much of guilty he was looking for the heart of the mother from the far corner of that room eh he had a voice of that heart the mother's heart is speaking to him anak i am fine but are you okay is your leg is painful but if they sense sisters no mothers can hate the children even if they hate their mothers no mothers can hate their child even if the child hate the mother this is the love of a mother look today's gospel there can be wolf there can be problems there can be attack on the sheep but sabini jos i will lay down my life for the sheep nobody takes my life for the sheep rather i gave it by myself it is my will without any complaint wala nang complaint se without any complaint i give my life for my sheep because i love my sheep so much this is the beautiful story of the good shepherd i will lay down my life for you for your benefit you may be suing it you may be answering back you may be matigas nang ulo you may be super stubborn or you may be disobedient whatever may be anak i love you so much recently in australia in sydney you might have read in the newspaper an orthodox bishop was giving a talk on the altar and there was an attacker came and he stabbed him 
and he's in the hospital and the other person is in the prison yesterday or day for yesterday that orthodox bishop gave a uh, you know interview to the to the to the to the media he said like this my brother i love you so much even if you hate me i still love you i don't have any problem against you i still love you and i pray for you but if they sense this this is an another image of good shepherd in 2024 and every parents is an image of the good shepherd everyone in this community is called to be a good shepherd let us dedicate our life for the betterment of other people balanang complaint i don't want anything from you but always i think what can i do for you to make you happy anak i don't want anything from you but i always think how can i make you smile every day because i love you you are mine you are my sheep i designed you i created you in my likeness and image i don't want anything from you but i always think how can i make you smile every day god bless this beautiful community this evening pray for more vocation to the priesthood and religious life your prayers are powerful and as i said please today on ways encourage the new generation to do some alms giving i know you will be able to give but give the money or things to your children and make them to do it let them see it let them do it let them experience it let them feel it so that more vocation more good people more compassionate understanding caring people will emerge in sanandras singalo in saint anthony paduva church definitely god is well pleased on you god bless you we love you so much and we pray together for more blessings upon our community amen